So the next time I'm playing, I'm gonna play for you guys is called um, "Appointments" by Julian Baker, and this is definitely my favorite song off her new album. It was the first single she released as well, and it sounds like it sounds amazing. I think you'll like it. Okay. I think Danny, I think right, you're definitely great. gonna like I it. I love this. Here you go, yeah. "Appointments" by Julian Baker. So that was Appointments by Julian Baker. Wow. She definitely has a beautiful voice. She really does. And like she kills every single song that she's on. Right. Um, I've liked her consistently. She's been pretty, she's been really consistent with her sound. Um, And this album's really good. So if you like that song, you're going to like the album. She's like one of those kind of artists, you know. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, No, really. What, um, what calls to you out of that? Like when you, when you hear something, what's the thing that gets to you first? Well, I mean. The first thing I definitely heard was the piano, oh. and it kind of felt like, um, like, like the like it was it was really rhythmic. So I kind of felt like lulled like lulled into oh, it. Yeah, because she definitely has that yeah. sound of her voice. Exactly, very and then, lulling. Very like her like I don't know. I just loved her vocals. I just yeah. I, I think that was the main thing that, p- that pulled me to her when I first listened to her. Um, but it's not. It was like. I don't know. I guess the first time I heard her, I was like not having a good day. So then I was just sitting down and listening to this, so it, and you know, it came to emotion. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's really how everything yeah. is for me. Just if yeah. it speaks yeah, me emotionally, no, to me you too. Know? Yeah. yeah. If it makes me feel good, it's in my playlist. It'll get right on my playlist, mm-hmm. and that's how I pick music by how I feel, how much yeah. emotionally attached to it. I have tons of what I call broken-hearted playlists mm-hmm. <laughs> from mm-hmm. failed relationships, mm-hmm. but I decided <laughs> you can't you can't just be listening to that because it will really affect you. So I started recently putting the happy songs and, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have, I, have a, I have a playlist <laughs> on, on Spotify. It's called Summer. Yeah. Um, I should probably rename it. I think I'm going to rename it like right now, actually. Okay. Because I just thought of something. What? Um, I'm going to name it Godspeed. Because my, 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 <laughs> I, have like, brand it. I have like 50 <laughs> followers on it, yeah. people who just love the music. For and years, it, you know, when when you make mixtapes, mm-hmm. remember that? I mean, I used to make mixtapes. I, I, actually, I made one mixtape. Yeah. And um, it was for my girlfriend's. Uh, birthday no kidding yeah that's great because that's not your genre right that's that's something you oh that's kind of cool actually yeah i used to make them i made one and i remember I called it the fu playlist because it was after a breakup a really vicious one right mm-hmm. and so i played it because it made me feel good and then i would lend it to people that had just broken up it became a thing where i would say here you gotta listen to this and give it back to me when you're done with it and i keep it for a couple of months but it'll always be the same you know the oh man you must yeah i felt it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get away from the negative onto the positive now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like the way it works for me is like the first thing gets me is like the emotion. Yeah, and like, but I, I don't. I, I'm definitely like have like a. I, I guess I could be labeled as a critic sometimes because I can. Def- no I can kidding. always. I can always hear. <laughs> it's got a, you got like your top ten, top three. Yeah, yeah and critic. not only that, like you're I can always hear like like even in the music I love, I can I can hear like what I would want to be better, like what I want to be different, you know, like almost everything. Um, So like if a song just isn't good for some reason, I can't listen to it. Like, um, like logic is an artist. He's not a bad artist at all. Like he makes some pretty, pretty good music. Um, But he released a song lately that's been played on the radio a lot. And it's honestly like, in my opinion, one of the worst songs I've heard in a long time. I've heard it. I don't like it at all. I don't know why. Like, I just didn't it, hit with yeah, it. He like it's so lazy. Like mm, he just tell, that's like, a good word. Like ah, oh, like not only is it instrumental. Like like feels like it's. I've heard it a thousand times before. You know, from other artists, yeah. other songs. But like there's like the lyricism. Like you couldn't think of a better way to say that. You know, really. <laughs> 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 uh, so I, I I definitely appreciate good lyricism. I think I think that go. comes from like the writer out of me. Um, and that's one reason why I like Run the Jewels because mm-hmm. they always have uh, creative lyricism, even if it's not in the um, the best, uh, like as in positive intentions. Have you ever had a song made from lyrics that you've written? No, I haven't. I have not. Yeah, I've got plenty of lyrics, but uh, they, they end up coming out like country western songs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can I can see that happening. I'm thinking, okay, this is kind of a country western hit f- feel, but I've never had that. I've always wanted to. I always thought it would be great to write a song and have somebody sing it, interpret it. You know, I, I'm if I, if if I could, I would start making my own music. You know, but I haven't. I have yet to start. Yeah. Um, well, you got plenty. I do have plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, you have plenty of ideas already moving around in your head. So when you get it down to getting your hands on the equipment, that'll be yeah. That's that's the main thing. Like I know how to, um, I know musically like how to, how to how I how I would make a song, mm-hmm. but I don't really know how to um, use all the equipment that I need. Like the yeah. I don't I don't own like a program that I could use, mm-hmm. 
And most of the ones that are worth using are very expensive. We do. We've Ooh. got Ableton here. Oh, I did not know that. <clears throat> yeah. So if That's you, cool. Yeah, and I, I, I was keeping. I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna learn it. I'm learn it. So I haven't learned it yet. Mm. But it's. I know. I know a couple of people here who have. Yeah, we had. We used to have a right where we're sitting. Used to be a music mixing making studio. Mm -hmm. We had like drum pads, and we had like the Ableton hooked up to the Mac here, and we were able to make beats. Yeah, for one nice. 2015, 2016, it was a very musical crew, and they wanted to make music. So we've always been a thought that this would be an area where you could actually produce music, and I hope we get to that. Again, Hopefully, yeah, that'd yeah, be really cool. Yeah, with the right cool. equipment, the right software, get a chance to make a hit song out of here. I know with all the talent that runs through here, yeah. we, we can definitely We definitely have, a, hit have song. a lot of talent. I've noticed we like, can do a hit some song. really good minds like, yeah. um, like Dominic and yeah. uh, I think Charlie. Charlie, Charlie Arash, yeah. could mm -hmm. he be our last year's music director? Great music minds. I mean, I I keep thinking we ought to get in and try to make a hit. Yeah. Right. And then we'd run it past you and you'd critique us out of existence. Well, <laughs> <laughs> You're a tough critic. Oh, gosh. Well, this song right here, Put Jewels On It, um, is definitely going to be a hit. Okay. Here is Put Jewels On It by Run The Jewels okay. and Static Skeleton. All right. Wow. So you mixed it up there at the end. <laughs> yeah. That was, um, that was an interesting, that was an interesting yeah. song. It was definitely like a old school hip hop vibe yeah, yeah, to it. Yeah, definitely right away. Um, I love Run the Jewels. Like, I've loved them. Like, they released an album called, all their albums are called Run the Jewels, like one, two, three. Um, they released a third one, like last December, and I loved it. Um, it made me mad though, because I'd already made my list. And now they release another album in like the end of December, <laughs> like December 28th. So yeah. like really now I have to change my entire <laughs> list. That made me sad. <laughs> That's wild. But it was okay because it was great music. So I'm yeah, not going yeah, no, to really complain. Great. No, it's great. Um, so the very last song I'm going to play is called Intrapid by Pine Grove. And um, this is me going back to the solemn sound that we had going on right. before, the okay. laid-back sound. Right. Um, I love this song. I've actually never heard the band before. Um, before I heard about the song released, I forgot where I heard it, but it was a great song. So here's Intrapid by Pine Grove. Like an indie alternative sort of vibe mm -hmm. to it like when you think indie alternative that's what you think but i don't know i, I enjoyed it I, I thought it has a really cool feel to it where are they from i have no idea actually no yeah this is my first as i said it was my first time oh. actually listening to the band um i'm definitely going to do more research because i think they have a song coming up pretty soon i mean an album coming up pretty soon because this was like a song that was released leading up to an album mm -hmm. um so i'm kind of excited for it you know oh, wow. i might do i might you know look look back into their discography um, but I know it's not. I know it's not too deep. They have, they're, they're they're sort of a new band. Um, actually, another another album that I forgot to mention, um, Weezer, released a new album. No kidding. Yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> yeah, we can um, skip that. Yeah, we can. <laughs> not really. Wow. Yeah. What didn't you like about it? It just mm. it was just un 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 uh, unentertaining, uninspired. You yeah. know, like I was talking to my friend about it. My friend Gabe, who's been on the show a couple mm -hmm. times. And he said, um, Weezer is the best band with the worst discography. <laughs> That's great. Because they're so up and down. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. released the White Album last year. That yeah. was really good after like three bad albums in a row. Um, and then I think it's the Blue Album, the one with them in front of the yeah, blue screen. Yeah. That's another great album. Like they have, like they had so much potential. But I don't know. So, so much of the discography right. just isn't very good. Oh, well, I have to check out that flow. Yeah, it's up it's, and down. It's very up and down. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. 
<laughs> consistency is something I appreciate with my artists. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Frank Ocean, you know what I mean? He didn't release an yeah, album yeah. for four years, right? But he killed it when he did. Right. You know, I'd rather have four years of no music and then really good yeah. music than four years of whatever music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember listening to an interview that was on um, on the internet, but it done in New York City. Charlamagne the God talking to Kanye West about his new album. And he just said, dude, it, you know, you should have worked harder. I was like, whoa, he put him on blast <laughs> right in front of him. He did. He says, you were, and, and the, the, the real reason I think that he didn't freak out was because Charlamagne's just telling the truth. Mm. And if you don't, he'll back himself up. You know, he'll say, look, at, I, and he did. He brought other examples of his work and said, this is nowhere near that. You know, I was putting him on blast. And then the publicity agent apparently in the background, you could hear him getting really nervous. And though, though, but Charlamagne said, hold up, hold up. I'm just telling my truth. This is my truth. I don't like yeah. that album. Yeah, he, that's, how, that's how he's been for his entire career. Yeah. He, he really doesn't care. He doesn't. Well, I think he does. He cares more though that, he, that he's going to tell you the truth, what he mm. thinks. So if you don't ask him, if you don't think. And that's what I love. And Kanye bought it. Kanye said, okay, I understand. Yeah, I can see how you feel that way. Yeah, and then cop to maybe it wasn't as long of a production cycle as he wanted on that album. He was distracted by something that was going on in his life. Mm. So it really made for a really great interview. Yeah, but um, I, I personally liked the album, but I would admit that it's the most inconsistent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely inconsistent. Um, but I feel like that's more of like a fault on the fact that he has like 20 songs on it when he doesn't need to. And that's something absolutely. that's been really... Um, has been going on a lot lately where artists just add way more songs than they need to so they get more streams. Which has really been since the advent of digital. Yeah. Because before you had to squeeze them onto a disc mm-hmm. and the groove, depending on how thick the music was, how, how much uh, bass was on there, yeah. the groove would be wider so you could get less songs on an album. And um, so they had to really pay attention to you know, the quality of the song, number mm-hmm. one, and, and we're limited by the number of cuts that would fit on one side of an album. Not so anymore. So and I, I think, think also... Opens those gates. And I think also because of like the fact that like the way streaming works, mm-hmm. because they get more money by each time a song oh, is streamed. You, it's gotta be, yeah. So if you have it's more songs, then get you more have streams, more streams. More you know, even if you're even if the songs are shorter, like if you have like ten one second songs, yeah. you're still gonna get right. the um the like the a stream. Uh, you know what I mean? We were talking earlier about being in the right place at the right time. I remember being in. Uh, it was called Quest Studios, mm-hmm. Quincy Jones Studios, where Michael Jackson was recording uh, the Thriller album. Right, wow. and I'm sitting there like, because I'm keep my mouth shut, just watching. Mm-hmm. And Michael comes in to talk to Quincy because I'm there to interview Quincy. I was in my mid twenties, I was young, and and Michael said to Quincy, "Why can't I get another song on this album?" And he goes, "Michael, because when we play it, the needle is so the groove is so thin that the needle pops out." So we got to spread it out a bit. I remember mm-hmm. him telling him that. And he goes, oh, you're kidding. He goes, no, you want that thick bass? We've got to have thick grooves. The needle needs to stay in that groove. That back, talk about low tech back then. Dang. But now it's like, you know, he, if Michael was alive, he'd probably have 50 songs in an album. I mean, <laughs> hopefully. I think, I think they would still all be good songs. Or, I know uh, they would be. Yeah. <laughs> I know they would be. You know yeah. they would. Cause you, why have we heard anything that was like in the vaults? Mm. Like Prince dies, we hear stuff from the vault. 